Hello everyone, this is Kyle from We Take Care of You, and today I'm going to show you how you can improve the design of your Power Apps forms. Now, we're not using responsive containers for this, it's just for a Canvas app form, but you'll see with just a few little changes that you can make your Power Apps look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to set the background of our canvas app so if you make sure the screen is highlighted and then you can come over to the properties on the right and go to the fill and then we just want to make that to be like a light gray i'll do a bit lighter than that okay so next what i'm going to do is i'm just going to insert our form so you can insert an edit form here and then and then I'm just going to connect to the data source on the right here. So I've already connected the SharePoint list as a data source. And for this example, I'm just using just some dummy fields. Um, but if you don't know how to connect to your SharePoint list, I'll put a link to a video in the description that shows you how to do that. But as you can see, I've just added the form here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to come over to the columns on the right and set that to be two columns. So next, I'm going to come over to the height property, and I'm just going to change this to be parent dot height, and then I'm going to change that y property to put it to zero. And for the width property, I'm just going to change that to 800. So that's still 800. That's fine. Okay. So I'm just going to move this to the center of the screen. Okay, next we're going to add another data card to the form uh, to act as our header at the top of the screen. So if you come to the right and select edit fields, and then if you select more actions up here and then add a custom data card. Now you'll see that that's added that data card there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the Y property to that to be zero. Uh, we will have to move these cards about a little bit, so you'll have to bear with us. But I'm just going to set these to one. And then we've got our top. So then to this for this top custom data card that we've just added to act as our header, I'm just going to set the width to be parent dot width. So even though we've got the two columns in the form, that'll always just take up the width. I'm also going to do width fit here. And then that'll just always keep that header in its own column above the rest of the data cards. Now I'm also just going to change the height of this from 200 to 120. Now you'll see the gap was a lot bigger then, so there's a bit of a bug. So what you need to do is just to shorten that gap if it did occur, sometimes it happens, is once you just remove some of the data cards, it'll snap back up and it'll just close that gap. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to move this down to two for now, just so we can snap that back up. Um, and then I'm going to come back up to this top data card and I am going to insert a rectangle. Now this is just to make the line as a separator. I'm just going to change that color to be dark gray. Okay, also next what I'm going to do is, is come down to the bottom right and I'm just going to change the color of the form to be white. So I'll just stand that out on my background. Uh, okay, so next what we want to do is I'm going to insert an image. So I'm going to select insert and image and insert an image. Bring that over here. And I've already got one saved, but you can obviously add your image file by selecting this. And I'm just going to resize this. Okay, so next I'm going to insert a label, and I'll just put it I'm just going to make the font size to be 18. Okay, so 
Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange the data cards around. So agenda can go as two, um, address can go as three. Last name can go as one. Notes can go as four, and then I'm just going to delete this attachment card. Okay, so next what we want to do is I'm going to remove the borders from all of the fields and then fill them in as grey. So as out of the box, as we always see, it always puts the borders on these as the border thickness is two. Um, I actually just like to remove those borders now. I'll just set it as I do them. So what we want to do is change the color of that to be a light gray. Let's try that one out. Okay, so I'm just going to do this for all of them. So now for the larger multi-select fields or multi-lines of text fields, I'm just going to give them more space onto the form. So I'm just going to change the width of them to parent dot width. And let's give it some notes as well. I'm also just going to make these a little bit bigger. So. Also, with the multi-line of text, you also want to change the mode here to multi-line. So when you type into the form, it doesn't all come out into the middle. Um, okay, so what's next? So it's looking better. It's looking good. Uh, so next, what we want to do is add some buttons. So I'm just going to insert some buttons here. And with the button colors, what I tend to do is for the, the main action items, I'll have as the primary color. And then for like a back button or a clear button, I'll use it maybe like the secondary color or just not as a bolder color. Um, so for this one, I could maybe just try. No, I'm not going to try that one. Okay, I'll just try that one there. That looks a bit better. Uh, and then I guess just make sure they're lined up with the form. Um, one other change that I'm going to do is I've found as well with a lot of these forms, when you've got a lot of questions, a lot of drop downs, it's also good to change some of the drop downs into radio buttons uh, just so it adds a whole different effect to the form and the design of the form. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to insert radio buttons. Select unlock and add, and I'm just going to make this in the way instead of the drop down. So what we're going to do with that is I've just resized that. Um, if you select on the data card, and you can go to you 
you can go to the items and then literally you can just copy and paste that so that'll just be populating from the items of, of whatever you've got in that sharepoint list drop down you can apply that as the items for the radio button and then what i'm also going to do is i'm going to change the vertical layout to horizontal and i'll pull them across like that if i just make that full screen okay and then what we want to do as well is i'm just going to take the name of this data card of the drop down and then when i delete it i am then just going to rename the new radio button to what that was called then you'll just see the errors go away so that's just linking that data card up to take the selection from the radio button because we've deleted the drop down um okay so finally i'm just going to make that rectangle a bit higher because i just don't think it looks very good better. okay so let's just see how this runs ah okay let me just quickly change the form to the default mode to new so now when we run this there you can see so now you can see the designs come through as i said this is just a basic design that you can apply to your power apps to give it like just a nice clean look and um, i hope this video helps we're gonna upload more of these templates uh, down the line and hopefully you can get more different designs going on. Please leave a comment in the in the comments if you like this, if it's beneficial to you. Uh, I hope this video helped. Please like and subscribe to the channel and take care. Thank you.